What's up guys, so today I want to cover a very important detail that was completely cut out of the anime of a certain magical index for no reason at all, and that is concerning the backstory of Kamijo Toma that was revealed to us by Toma's father, Toya, during the Angel Fall arc in Old Testament Volume 4. So, if you've already read this volume, this information won't be anything new to you, but if you haven't, then I'm sure you will find this very interesting and might even improve Toma's character for you if you're only familiar with the anime. Let's begin. So, as I said, a section of Toma's past is revealed to us by Toma's dad, Kamijo Toya, during a talk he gives to his son during the Angel Fall arc concerning the Angel Fall spell. This is obviously after the first volume of Index, where at the end of that arc, Toma lost his memories of his past, and of course this included the memories he had growing up before he moved to Academy City to become an Esper. Toya informed Toma that when Toma was a child, the other children and their parents around them called Toma the God of Pestilence, basically calling him a disease or a plague. This is because people believed Toma was cursed with bad luck and he would spread it to those around him. Toya stated in the volume, The children believed that just by having you around, others gained misfortune. Because they believed that, they would throw rocks at you just because they saw you, and the adults did not stop them. When they saw your injuries, it did not make them sad. It instead made them sneer at you. They would urge the kids to hurt you even worse. The children believed that when you left, their misfortune would also leave. Because they believed that, they would avoid you. Even the adults believed that. Do you remember, Toma? A man buried in debt once chased you around with a knife trying to stab you. When the TV stations heard about it, they used a paranormal show as an excuse to show your face on TV without permission and treat you like a monster. That is why I sent you to Academy City. I was scared. I wasn't scared of the whole fortune and misfortune thing. I was scared of the reality that people would act violently towards you, as if it was the natural thing to do, just because they believed in that." End quote. And from this conversation, it is also revealed that Toya assembled the different souvenirs in his house in a specific feng shui to try and help his son by removing his misfortune. If Toma's identity was changed thanks to Angel Fall, then he would no longer be treated like a plague by others. As the narration states, As the identity of Kamijo Toma would be switched with others, Kamijo Toma wouldn't think that Toya was his father. Not only that, a stranger would become Kamijo Toma and walk around in his own family as the son. End quote. Even if the spell affected the entire world, and caused an angel to descend from heaven, which Toya probably didn't fully comprehend or think that would happen due to his lack of magical knowledge, Toya was willing to make sacrifices to help his son. Although due to Imagine Breaker, Toma's identity wasn't swapped, so Toya's plan was pretty much in vain anyway. This backstory is important as we kinda understand thanks to why a person like Kamijo Toma would help Index in the very first arc. He knows what it's like to be alienated from normal society and wants to show others that he can actually benefit the lives of others. But Toma lost his memories as a result of saving Index. By saving her, Toma took the place of Index in a way, as Index was the one who was supposed to lose her memories, but it ended up being Toma himself. So, for the new Toma hearing this, the one that has lost his memories, he also dismisses Toya's efforts to try and cure his misfortune, as Toma says he might be unlucky, as he almost died several times in the previous arcs, and got into some pretty crazy situations against dangerous enemies at the cost of his physical body being beaten up and his mental memories being wiped. However, Toma still showed he can benefit others by saving people in need of help, and without Toma, they would arguably have suffered or even died without him. Toma wants to become this image of what he believes is a hero, as it gives him a purpose to do good, 
despite him being cursed with misfortune. Terma states, If I hadn't been so unlucky, it's true that I could live longer, and I wouldn't have to face the gates of death several times. Kamijo glared at Toya and said, But can that be considered fortune? Living a normal everyday life so casually, and yet not finding out that others are suffering, drenched in blood, as they cry for help. Casually living, is this really fortune? That's why, don't stop me. I don't want to be that lucky guy. Instead of living a carefree life and not knowing about the pain of the people around me, I'd rather be unfortunate and get involved in the pain of those people. Don't think that I'm an unlucky person. I'm the luckiest person in the world. End quote. As Terma has no recollection of the terrible consequences of bad luck from his childhood that Toya referred to, Terma does not want to let the past determine his actions. He only wants to follow what's inside the current version of him and not let luck get in the way of who he wants to be in life. Terma simply wants to make his own luck and draft a new identity for himself that he can benefit those around him. So Terma doesn't want his bad luck removed as that defines who he is. And for someone clinging onto this new identity, he would lose yet another aspect of himself if he lost that. Toma's bad luck might get him into dangerous situations, but that gives him a platform to help others when he might have not been able to if he didn't have the bad luck. And that way he can actually help others. And that's what makes Toma happy, as that's his purpose in life. With his memory loss, Terma wanted to be an idealised version of who he wanted to become and who he believed he should become. He didn't want to be a normal person as he can't be a normal person. He's had amnesia, he's got a magic breaker, he's got bad luck, he's being tormented by both the magic and science side and he has the power to destroy illusions and negate any supernatural ability. It wouldn't be his style to just live a normal life. He wants to be someone who can benefit others and help others, as this gives him a purpose in life. As without his memories, Terma was just a blank slate. He had nothing, but this gives him something and it lets him become the best person he can think of. Anyway, let me know what you think of Terma's past. I hope this might prompt you to give the novels a try, especially the early Old Testament volumes, where there was a lot of details missed from the novels in the anime. And yeah, I just think it's baffling that this wasn't included when it's so pivotal to like who Terma is as a character, even though he can't remember this. It's, it's such an important um, way to flesh him out, and we understand Terma a lot more thanks to this. And as even though he, yeah, even though he lost his memories and has no recollection of this, like his reaction to hearing this news and trying to explain, like to, to his dad, like who he is and how this shouldn't affect him anymore. Like you don't have to change me. This is who I want to be now. This is my new purpose and new identity in life. I think it's a very strong moment, and Terma does like call his dad a bastard as well. Like he's absolutely angry at his dad for for causing such a commotion just just to just to try and help him um, but I guess that's an aspect of Toma which is in his dad because his dad wanted to help his son um, but Toma takes it to the next level Toma wants to, to help everyone but at the same time Toma doesn't want to help people by causing you know worldwide crisis um, <laughs> and getting you know innocent people involved and you know, causing um, an apocalyptic event potentially. Like, even Termo wouldn't go that far. He's he's more more focused on the individuals rather than getting the entire world involved. So yeah, let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.